The country was very lovely just then. It was summer. In the sunniest spot, there was a duck sitting on her nest. Her little ducklings were just about to be hatched. But she was quite tired of sitting, for it had been such a long time. At last, one egg after another began to crack. All the chicks had come to life. Oh, no! The biggest egg is still there. <sighs> How long is this going to take? All that day, the duck sat on her nest. Finally, late that night, the big egg began to crack. big and ugly he was. That is a monstrous big duckling. None of the others look like that. Might he be a turkey chick? The next day was gloriously fine. The mother duck with her whole family went down to the pond. She decided that if the big duckling could swim, then she would be sure that he was her own. Into the water he shall go if I have to kick him in myself. Into the water she sprang, and one duckling plumped in after another. She waited to see if the big gray one would be able to swim like the others. Sheep. He was her own after all. Now come with me, children, and I will introduce you to everyone else in the barnyard. Just look there. that duckling is. Let him be. He's doing no harm. And so the first day passed. And afterwards, matters grew worse and worse. His brothers and sisters ignored him. And the girl who fed them kicked him aside. Even the rooster squawked at him. duckling was at his wit's end and did not know which way to turn. It seemed that none of the other animals wanted him around because he was so ugly.
why was he so ugly? The poor ugly duckling decided to leave the barnyard, never to return again. He came to a great marsh where the wild ducks lived. He was so tired and miserable that he slept there the whole night. In the morning, the wild ducks gathered around to inspect the stranger. What sort of creature is this? He? Definitely ugly. stayed there all alone. Then two wild geese came. Ugly! But just at that moment, there were gunshots. A hunter had appeared in the marsh. The poor duckling was terribly alarmed. A frightful dog appeared close beside him. The duckling hurried away from the marsh as fast as he could. He ran across fields and meadows. And there was such a wind that he had to work to make his way. Towards nightfall, he reached a little cottage. He saw that the door had fallen off one hinge so that he could creep inside. An old woman lived there with her cat and her hen. What on earth is that? Her sight was not so good and she thought the duckling was a fat duck which had escaped. This is a wonderful find. She thought that the duckling would lay eggs for her, so she took him into her house. The cat was master of this house, and the hen its mistress. The hen asked the duckling if he could lay eggs. The cat asked if he could purr, arch his back, and give off sparks. When the duckling said he couldn't, they told him that he would have to hold his tongue in their house and keep his opinions to himself. But that night, the poor duckling left the cottage. He had already begun to miss the fresh air and the sunshine and he longed to float on the water once more. One autumn evening, when the sun was just setting, a flock of beautiful large birds appeared out of the bushes. The 
duckling had never seen anything so beautiful. They were snow white swans with long, graceful necks. If only he could fly away with them. He was drawn toward them more than he had ever been by any other creature. The winter came and it was so bitterly cold that the duckling had to move about to keep the water where he swam from freezing over. But the hole in which he swam grew smaller and smaller. He grew so weary that he could move no more and was frozen into the ice. A peasant came along and saw the duckling. He felt sorry for him and decided to take him home. The duckling soon revived. The children wanted to play with him. But the duckling grew frightened. He rushed wildly about and flew into the milk. And then into the butter. Everyone tumbled over one another trying to catch him. The duck managed to fly outside and landed in the newly fallen snow. It would be too sad to tell how exhausted and miserable he was during that long, hard winter. But the weeks passed, and eventually came the spring. The sun began to shine warmly in the marsh. The larks were singing, and the world was beautiful once again. The earth was warm beneath his feet. His legs felt stronger now, and when he tried his wings, they flapped with much greater strength than before. As he stood on the shore, he recognized the snow-white swans that he had seen in the autumn. Oh, he longed to be near them, even if they would refuse to accept him. So he flew into the water and swam toward them. But what was this? There, 
reflected in the water. He saw his own image. No longer was he an ugly duckling. He was himself a swan. sadness that he had felt all his life disappeared. He had never dreamt of so much happiness when he was the ugly duckling.